It is the morning of December the 8th, 2016. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. And I am Dana Durnford, your host, the nuclear proctologist.org. We are streaming live from British Columbia, Canada, from the coastline the death and the destruction wrecked upon it by the nuclear industry. We are happy to have this privilege to talk. We live in a unique time where our voice counts, where our voice is important, where our world we're able to fight on an even keel in many ways, where we're able to share with you knowledge and information that goes beyond comprehension just 10 years ago. We're doing it in a format that works for most people, speaking the English language. Now, Yesterday, we went and done a green screen. There's a look at it this morning, about an hour and a half ago. And so I had bought that material in the hopes that I can match the paint I did. And we'll get into the show in a second, but this is important. We raised enough money to do it. And we raised enough to get the lights. We raised $810. So we done this right away yesterday. Turns out... It's the wrong color. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to play. My fault. It's the wrong color, but because of the equipment I got, I can I can tweak it and get away with it, but it's not going to work. No big deal. Outside of we done all that work, and that's my bedroom, by the way living room slash bedroom right there. I have to move the bed out, keep it out. The minute I wake up in the morning, set everything up, turn everything on, blah, blah, blah. But we raised enough money to get the real green screen. And uh, they're $120 Canadian a pop. And so we can get at least, but it looks like four of those and do the whole place in a proper green screen instead of this haywire that's not going to work because you can see how how I fade. That's the best I could get it with that, uh, that color there. And the other color was much darker. Oh, well, lesson learned. Here we go. Let's get on with the show. It's a rough one. Very rough one today. Fukushima. I smurfed that up already. Fukushima is unique effect upon the coastline of British Columbia is going to be emblematic for everywhere else. Now, that picture is from expeditions we've done on the coastline. And that one was Louise Narrows. And we show before and after pictures um, of that picture. I'll show you some of those before and after pictures. Now, at the same time, as we done the coastline, what we noticed was an extinction event. It's my best friend for 15 years, Zoe. She passed away on a bird count this year. Not this one, but this headline. Think about that headline are starving to death, but they only found uh, 250. They found 250. But the statement they're making is that they're all starving and that that's an extinction event for puffins. I didn't import that other headline. for some reason, just one second. 
because that's important. I don't know how I missed that. I got all the other stuff there. I'll f I know words, too. I'll get it right quick. Not that quick, obviously. Quick enough, though. Here we go. Almost there. Gotcha. So, second paragraph, in just shy of three weeks, they've seen 250. And scientists believe the actual number of dead puffins is much higher. In 10 years of monitoring, they only seen six puffins wash in the top paragraph. In the third paragraph down, the cause is no great mystery, really. The birds are simply starving to death, really. And they're starving to death because normally when they come ashore, say, they find the, the right-hand side. Instead, what they found, this is the coastline, the top of, uh, up by Prince Rupert. You see that, Alaska? That's where they found all the birds and the puffins. And they starved to death. Now, they starved to death because when they came ashore, as we showed on these expeditions, the, the, the diversity was gone. It was wiped out. And only a couple of algaes were left. Let's keep, we'll come back to this in a second. Turn that down a little notch. And now this is going to probably confuse everybody. What you're looking at is from the Weather Channel about a month ago where they claimed all the animals were going to migrate off the coastline. I couldn't download it, so it's a screen capture it'll stall. But this is all the animals migrating off the Pacific coastline, yeah? And so this is the cover story for what's happening. The die-offs were, uh, you know, half a million birds That's not the one we wanted. Now, scientists say as many as half a million MERS died. The most recent in mid-February, up to 8,000 showed up on the shores of Lake Iliamna. So 8,000, that was on a freshwater lake, and a half a million. Uh, this is staggering words we're listening to, yeah? I mean, seriously, these are staggering, but... They starved to death because when he came ashore, as we showed it before and after, this is Louise Narrows from taking all those expeditions, 260 days, 15,000 miles. We showed as an, as an extinction event for the coastline of where those migratory animals were moving away from because there's no food there, but they weren't moving. They were starving to death and disappearing. More on that now. And so the whales are starving to death. Now, um, 200 whales, New Zealand, starving to death. 337, starved to death. Um, Mind-blowing die-offs. Now, the puffins, finding 250 and saying half the population has died is really friggin' interesting because you think about 30 million one-ton bags from Fukushima that they picked up because it's deadly, not for something to do, not because they were bored, not because they were having a trying to make work project. They done it because this stuff, a single atom, will really... Um, so 13... In 2015, all of this is 2015, 2016 for the birds. Corpses of sea lions, birds, sea turtles decomposing, fears for whales, encountering radiation hotspots. Volunteers were trained. But just finding one whale on a beach is extraordinary. But finding 337 that are dead after they died is bizarre, land, see? Ten giant whales found dead. Now, finally, once again, the odds of finding two dead whales in one spot are astronomical. 
Three is uh, uh, just Lives of London won't insure it. Four is uh, is an event. Five is just completely frightening to uh, academics who understand this. And ten is like, let alone two hundred, let alone that, let alone and the polar bears are starving to death. And I'm not sure if it was this one or the other one. I usually show. Uh, swam 700 miles, longest swim, open ocean swim, the deepest dive, and uh, didn't eat in that two-week period. Scientists followed them. and But other researchers have reported on the beer starving all over uh, where the radiation hotspots would have hit. Let's keep going. So 30 million bags was insignificant cause to what really happen and so to touch on that you think about 30 million bags from four buildings 30 million bags from four buildings now academics were on the ball um, Austria had a forecast for the radioactive fallout the Health Canada had a model that they hid away for quite a long time. Other institutions produced models after 36 hours. Uh, you know, jet streams is 100 miles an hour. This is uh, air dispersal disposition, 180 hours. Bottom right hand, 468 hours. The plume had covered uh, the Pacific and North America and Europe and the Atlantic. But the big numbers were the Pacific. Now, everything that comes in and hits the Rocky Mountains with a heavy payload, because they're low, right, will lose his pay, a lot of his payload and go over the Rocky Mountains. But the, we're talking jet streams, what we're looking at here. But we're also talking about ongoing, constant, continuous disposition from the melted reactors themselves. Okay. So models, that's the plume coming out of there, just from the burning. And so this is, uh, each building had five reactor cores stored up high in the building. We covered that extensively in the last two weeks. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> all the Western US, most East Coast. Now this model is only based upon a couple of days releases. None of these models, and these are well-known models, are based upon the actual inventories of the reactors. When the reactors melt down, they produce more than you put in. They're able to cannibalize uh, and atomize an aerosol uh, fission product and everything that comes in contact uh, that is cannibalized by these enormous heats our fission products and you have to treat it that way and you would if you were in an academic environment blah 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 or working with people that actually had a moral compass or, con or conscience so it comes in hits north america all these models are only based upon say cesium or iodine and they are your tracers so once you know it's coming through, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it was cesium or uranium or plutonium or americium or neptunium, barium or whatever it is they want to call it, because there's endless amounts of these isotopes. Um, you treat it as a tracer. So here's Noah's model from the American government that nobody in the American government bothers talking about, even though it's produced by the taxpayers. This is produced by the American taxpayers. The government is just someone you're hired to, to I'm not going to say the words, but to put a stick up your ass and pretend you're a foot. You're, you're an idiot or something, so to speak. So what you're looking at is that, think about the Pacific Ocean today for me. So the plume now is also going to be raining down in the Pacific Ocean. Once it covers, and it will, we can just jump ahead, and you can see the date in the top center. This is only based upon uh, just a 
couple of days releases over a short period of time. You're at the 23rd of March. The accident happened March the 11th. So uh, it's going to be like this all the way to the ocean floor. Now, it's not going to kill everything. When Like if you're a fish in that, normally you ingest it as a fish or, you know, microscopic. There's a, a billion creatures in a glass of water. And so you, like this takes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to give humans cancer, but we're way bigger microscopic stuff. We're way bigger than a fish, obviously, right? But a fish doesn't live long enough to get cancer. And, but people, fish will bioaccumulate at 15,000. So fish are going to last until the very end. Until, but this extinction event, the killer whales, we're going to play that clip coming up right away here. We'll come back to this one. We'll leave these two windows running. And I know I hooked that out this morning. And it's not the first loss this year. Well, I am alarmed. I've seen the necropsy reports from day 32. Ken Balcom has studied these whales, including their ability to reproduce for decades. He's with the Center for Whale Research. This is far more sinister, where we're losing reproductive females and their babies. Uh, you know, this is just uh, four weeks ago. When you when you don't reproduce anymore, you don't have a population. The news, while not confirmed by a carcass, might as well be. This is the last picture of J28 taken by Balcom on October 2nd, along with her youngest calf, J54, a male. He says the whales are emaciated. Emaciated. Now they can eat seals and sea lions and halibut and tuna and other whales they can eat porpoise they can eat uh, all the sharks normally they can eat squid and anchovies and herring also mackerel and the fish that are feeding up on them the skate the uh, 50 species of rock cods there's nothing they can't eat they can eat the birds and they did underweight underfed underweight underfed because they're such big animals, they can live on fat, but they're emaciated. Now, a, a killer whale, there's no history anywhere in any text on this planet of whales being emaciated ever until Fukushima. And the short supply of the whale's natural prey, Chinook salmon, forced the mothers to draw from fat, often filled with accum... Well, they're blaming it on accumulated toxins in their fat, of course. But what you're talking about is... They don't eat just salmon. Salmon are not deer all year long, year after year. Sal salmon are not their main food. They eat seals and sea lions. They just gouge themselves on that high protein. But it doesn't. They eat everything else. <laughs> but because salmon is one of the most popular fish during most seasons, right? And they're big. And that's what they have been doing for millenniums. It's a total misdirect anyway. But what it means is that the 80 orca whales that are left won't survive much longer. There will be no whales uh, within a year. They're all emaciated. All 48 that died last year in 2015 were emaciated. 12 inches of blubber down to 4 inches. It's the death of the Pacific. And we know it's the death of the Pacific because we went out uh, on the Fukushima expeditions, we documented it, showed an extinction event on the coastline. That means everything else is gone. It's all up at the nuclear proctologist. We already done the work. So what was, what was happening is this disposition. You only needed one of these, but it never stopped coming at it. And so the, the system, the nuclear industry has so much power in collusion with the media and the government. For 70 years, they've told you that radiation uh, is like the banana, like potato chips sleeping next to someone, eating potato chips rather, climbing mountains on a plane. It's everywhere. It's good for you. Same, same lie everywhere you go for 70 years. The models are only based upon a short release for just a couple of days. It's not based upon the actual inventory. 
And notice how to model favorite Japan that time. Right? Watch this again. I'll move it ahead. Notice how it favors Japan where a little plume goes back over Japan. But if you look at the real models, they're not real models, but models that expand out, it's not, there's no way the wind just blew everything. It doesn't work that way. The wind blows you straight back. You ever see forest fires, what happens? You know, you ever see snowstorms in the winter? What happens when the wind changes or the storm comes back? Within a day, hours, a week. So these plumes, the modeling is not being genuine in any way, is what I'm saying to you, right? Okay. But think about what happened and that the reactors are in that same spot. And that picture is not there for some reason. Think about the buildings. How they don't look like that. Think about how they pretend that they're inside of a building that don't even exist. Consider um, the stuff we talked about this last week. This is a 190-foot building to your right. Even just compare it to a 10-story building. You can tell the 190-foot building, uh, Reactor 4, is completely destroyed. It's the same thing. But if you go all the way, well, you got to just look at the buildings and understand. You don't need to see that explosion to know they blew up, do you? Do you actually need to see that to know that that is blown up, right? And that there is nothing left, no matter which angle you come at it from. The reactors were 150 foot wide. That's what they look like right there. They put transport trucks up on the roof, yeah? Okay, let's keep going. Think about what they're doing at Chernobyl again. Think about- If they lose power to those, uh, the, to that reactor or to any other reactors uh, past a few hours from now, uh, you might reach a three mile. Do you think they got power back to that? Do you really, for one second, think that she's inside we of that? We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during... She says she's inside of the building on the right that's to the building on the left. It's this chaos. This is just this utter chaos. Everybody you turn to... Not near Baghdad. Don't believe them. They are nowhere. This right, it's all lies, right? Everybody is speaking out in the media. That's what that's their job. No matter what country, culture, ideology you come from, those are the lawyers in that context. But if you listen to the academics, and the tops of these pools are a hundred feet above ground, <clears throat> and well, if they're a hundred feet above ground, they look like the one on the left. I don't really need to see the difference. That's all I needed. If the media showed me that, I call them a lawyer. If the media showed me that, I know they were a lawyer. If the media showed me that both of these buildings are 190 feet high, it was not too hard to work out they're a lawyer. We know, we know Unit 4 looks like that on two sides, and that's the other two sides. Let's do that again. Two sides. Right? That's two other sides. The, the water side to your left. And the water or the that weird side. And then look look at it from these angles though. Look at number three. Think about 90, 190 foot buildings. No, 190 foot building, right? Or even apartment buildings. Like it's not hard to understand what a lie we have been fed and how dangerous how much danger we have put ourselves into by uh, not coming out and stopping and holding that law accountable. Okay. Today we got some other studies on dogs besides Dr. Raymond Gilmetti, who we love his, hate him, but love his, I shouldn't use that word, I suppose. We disrespect him because of what he does for 35 years at Loveless Respiratory Research Institute. And toxicity of inhaled plutonium dioxide in beagle dogs and beagle puppies. What did he show us, right? Think about what he showed us. He only showed us that every dog died in every study. 
But there's not just him. There's so many other studies. Did we know this with curium? And curium is the biggest byproduct of the fuel chain, right? And so those 30 million bags, uh, most of that uh, would have curium. Curium is worse than plutonium. You can see what plutonium and curium does to dogs. It kills all the dogs. But we know this from the americium, plutonium, and man, monkeys, and baboons, how it aggregates uh, and statistically there's a correlation in skeletal distribution in humans, non-humans. So distribution, retention, plutonium, americium, uranium, and moist. We, we know stuff already. We have a long history. It's actually not like a banana. It's not like walking in sunshine. It's not like sleeping next to somebody. We know this because we have this documentation. Average doses to 448 days were calculated. Disposition on all bone surfaces. A burial of three uh, nuclides in areas of bone growth was observed. Transfers of activity to marrow was greatest for 239. 233 uranium is what you're going to get for salt reactors. You need that for the salt reactors. The uranium 233. That's what the salt reactors are going to run on. They're going to take thorium, right? To put it through a, re a reaction, get uranium-232, 233, which are fissionable products. And that's what they're going to use for the chain reaction. That's what thorium... Because there's a lot of thorium out there, but the byproduct is this unbelievable amount of tritiated 3H water. And it's a low, very low emitter, but it's such a prolific one. And so it aggregates and sequesters in your muscles, your organs, your, and around your bones. And why its emitter might be just very short, it's constant. So it destroys the DNA and the chromosomes by the millions. But, but, but it's not a big emitter. See, in the context of it goes a long way or big energy, but it's still enough to do your DNA, your chromosome. Yeah, pop, pop, pop. Okay, we're almost finished. Let's run through the rest of these. We won't get through them all, but another couple of minutes. Uh, time exposures of retention, survival, uh, tumor induction in beagle dogs. Tumor, think about tumor induction. Come here, you little beagle. Well, there's so many of these, but the influences of age, uh, there was an influence. We know that, that children are highly affected in Fukushima and Japan. They've now got a, uh, a fun in Japan. We'll come back to that tomorrow. Tomorrow's skit day. We're still going to pull off a skit day. I'm going to order everything today. I'm going to order everything today. Um, I'm going to order the lights and the green screens. Hopefully today, the money will be there in six days, but I got somebody who will do it for me. And so we can get that on the way. And so I'm not going to try to fix uh, my green screen. I'm going to just go get the stuff, order that stuff in. They're 120 bucks a pop and shipping. And, and I think it's, they're in Alberta, so we're shipping them from Canada. We were looking at the site yesterday. So that's huge because my lights are all handmade. We still would like to be able to raise, um, you know, more enough money to do another four lights. Uh, Canadian is 480 blah, 600 bucks Canadian or something. The green screen stuff I'm going to get is not going to be the cheap stuff because I want to be able, I'm tired of working with shit. And so I'm always going to spend a little extra money because you can get it cheap. And I was looking at it all yesterday, scratching my head why I didn't do this before. And so you can donate. The links are below my videos at Beautiful Girl by Dana, the nuclear proctologist.org. You can donate with your credit cards, dear. We've been doing it for three years. Nobody's ever uh, had complaints about what happened to their credit cards or any blowback or just 
It's a legitimate site that we're using. It's a well, uh, it's all hooked up legitimately through the system. You don't, it's just no different going to the shop and buying something to donate to me. And PayPal's the same way. No complaints. All customers, customers, all the people that have donated, um, apparently didn't have too many issues or they were able to resolve any that they came across were usually just accidents and were quick. All of them were quickly, and there wasn't many, was quickly resolved. And so um, I apologize, right, for having to do that all the time. I don't know how else to do it. How else am I supposed to do it if I don't ask? And... We got we got to keep pushing. That's all I know. I'm just not going to worry about it. Just keep pushing. Just go ahead and do it. That's all I do every day. I take everything. Wake up six o'clock. Pull everything out of the bedroom. Put this in there. And then at the end of the day, shove it all back and put everything away. Because otherwise, you got to. You gotta leave it like it is all day long, cause I don't care. I love it. I'll do whatever it takes, no matter what. I'll try my best, and that's what we're we're well on our way today to, to accomplishing the visual problems that I was having and resolving that is huge. I woke up and even though the green screen didn't work this morning, friggin', I'll just go do it right this time, and that'll be the end of it. No more. Messing around. Hugs for everybody. Hugs, Elaine. Thank you, honey. I'm thirst. Stacy. Neil. Liz. Billy yesterday. Thank you, folks. Everybody. I'm your author, Jace. CJ. Neil. Hello, everybody. Thomas Ackerman. Hey, buddy. Hello, everybody. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I'll get busy again. We'll be doing uh, skit day tomorrow. It won't be perfect, but it'll still be skit day. I've been grabbing headlines all week. I'll be working all day. A lot harder than I will be in a week's time to get another skit out. And all I can say is... I always do what I say I'm going to do. I work as hard as I can to do it, and it might not happen right on schedule, but it does happen. It always has, always will. My whole life has been like that. I don't know how to switch that part off. I got no intentions. Hugs for everybody. See everybody tomorrow. Tomorrow's skit day, fun day tomorrow, if that's possible. <laughs> don't eat the seafood. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Keep coming back and learning. And then you'll understand why. Hugs for everybody.